These guys really need something better to do with their lives than watching teenage boys. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 130th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 18th episode of Season 3 titled A Ranger Catastrophe Part 2. We begin this episode right where we left off in the command center. The five rangers don't know what to do between Rito and Tommy. Zoran says that they can't locate Tommy, and suddenly, Tommy just goes unconscious. <laughs> and they lose a the signal. Cat then teleports out of there, turning back into a cat in Rita's lap. Rita says that they have the White Ranger right where they want him. Goldar asks if he can fight Tommy, and Zed lies, saying that Goldar has earned that right. No, he hasn't. Goldar leaves. In a random cave, Goldar walks up to Tommy, just talking and talking to a sleeping Tommy. In the command center, Zordon tells the Rangers to stop worrying about Tommy because they need to go stop Rito. It's morphin' time! The five rangers show up in a field and they talk to a giant Rito for no reason before Rito just breathes on them. Whatever, they call out their ninja zords and once again, we're getting individual zords fighting. The bear zord causes an earthquake while the frog shoots fire. The crane shoots lasers while the ape zord uses a staff. But then Rito materializes a flamethrower on his arm out of nowhere. They don't let Billy do a damn thing, immediately forming the ninja megazord. Megazord then just walks through explosions before they apparently just knock off Rito's arm. Then they punch him down, and Rocky makes an outdated Honeymooners reference by saying, To the moon, Rito! Rito appears in the moon base, and Rito's confused for a moment, but then she just gives up trying to understand what happened. Way to go, Rito. She then says it's time for plan B. This was your plan A? In the command center, they've tried to retrace the signal from Tommy's communicator, but evidently there's a powerful shield to prevent them from learning where Tommy is at. Then Tommy wakes up, seeing Goldar. The car then disappears, dropping him on his ass in the best way possible. Kinda wish it had just turned back into a dumpster and then all of a sudden he was just in there. Then Rita appears in a horrible static filter that does more damage than good because it's blocking out a lot of Rita's face while she's trying to talk. Tommy demands to know where Catherine is at, and Rita says to be careful because Kimberly might be jealous because he's spending so much time with some other girl. Then Tommy just morphs. Rita disappears and Goldar yells at Tommy. Billy somehow gets a visual on Tommy and the rangers see what's going on. And Adam says, what's going on? Because there's literally nothing happening. <laughs> they also don't know where that girl went. Then Aisha says that Goldar probably wants Tommy at full strength to fight, but that makes zero sense. They also can't teleport him out because shields or whatever. Billy says that he and Adam need to get to his lab to figure out something. Tommy and Goldar fight for a little bit before we see on the moon that Babu and Squad are informing Rita of Billy and Adam leaving the command center and going toward Billy's house. Rita says it's time to enact plan B, I guess, and she zaps the cat that she's been holding this entire time, creating a cat monster in the park. The cat monster then flies in, landing in front of Billy and Adam, who morph right away. There's a funny fight against a monster with black and blue getting thrown into the trees like losers. Billy then calls the other rangers for help because this episode needs more padding out, and the other three morph. Then the five rangers are just fighting the monster in the middle of a cul-de-sac. They barely fend off the monster before she retreats. The rangers split up to do exactly what they were doing before. On the moon, Rita is pissed that even plan B isn't working this time, so she yells for Rito. He's supposed to go help Goldar defeat Tommy now, walking away. Meanwhile, Tommy gets tossed onto the ground and Rito shows up and they're both beating the absolute crap out of Tommy. Love this scene. Also, where has this Goldar been? Tommy even takes out Saba and tries to fight them off, but then Saba gets hit out of his hands. Meanwhile, Rocky, Aisha, and Kim are watching Tommy just get totally demolished, so they contact Billy and Adam who are still working on whatever the hell it is that they're working on. Then, Tommy somehow uses telekinesis to get Saba back to him. Saba doesn't say anything at all, it just happens. Billy and Adam are done, so they teleport back to the command center, and Billy quickly hooks up his new device to the console and for whatever reason it gives them the coordinates somehow. They've apparently just barely penetrated the shields around the palace and there's like some worry there, but they have to try anyways because if they don't, Tommy's gonna die and probably that other chick. Meanwhile, Saba apologizes to Tommy about them sucking and really, I feel like Saba is so underutilized. Then in the command center, everyone holds hands and causes color-coded energy? What the hell is going on? Somehow that teleports Tommy out of there and he's in the command center. Tommy's worried about Catherine, but Billy says that they can't find her at all. Rita and Zed argue about the plan failing, and Catherine walks in, answering to Lord Zed before she turns into her monster form again. He immediately sends her away. At the command center, the alarms go off, showing the rangers that the monster is back in the city. It's morphin' time! The rangers show up, and the monster talks smack for a second before Rita and Zed just make her giant. 
They call out their ninja zords right away before ninja just flies in on that stupid cloud while screaming his own name. And it made me literally laugh out loud. They form the ninja megazord while ninja punches the monster in the face. Then ninja gets mad about her not being able to win or something, converting into battle mode. Then the ninja falcon zord attaches, creating the ninja falcon megazord. Ninja fires an energy orb at the monster before the rangers just come down, punching the monster in the face. She then falls down, exploding. Did they... Did they just kill that girl? The rangers lead their zords right away for absolutely no reason, unmorphing. They find Catherine in the park, who apparently did not get crushed during the Megazord battle. I mean, she was the monster, but the rangers don't know that. Also, did she just watch them jump down and demorph? Zed talks about how Rita might have been right about using Cat to help them, and we see that the rangers and Cat are walking together. She tells him that she just moved here because of her dad, who was transferred here, and whatnot, before she leaves. She then flirts with Tommy in front of Kimberly, and no one even says anything. Then suddenly, they see PC in front of them, and Aisha is relieved to have her. Then we see the cat's face, and her eyes glow green. The end? Over the credits, we see Bulk and Skull struggle through the park, screaming for the cat, and then they find the monster painting. I'm confused as to where these bonus scenes are, but whatever. Wow, a two part of the ends without everything being resolved may be a first for Power Rangers. I mean, seriously, I can't think of a time besides maybe Return of an Old Friend where something was left open in the universe for multiple episodes like this. It's kind of nice to see some real writing being put into this season. Well, I use real loosely. Other than that, I'm confused about Kat as a character because she just has so many damn forms. And for some reason, she seems to be intended by Rita to break up Kim and Tommy. But like, why would Rita care? They're still going to fight together because they're barely a couple now anyways. Buckle your seatbelt though, because we're about to go into a three-parter. Until next time, may the power protect you.